Welcome to Name Check. I'm Michael Riedel of The Post. My guest today is a terrifically talented filmmaker. Andrew Jenks is entering his second season on MTV with his documentary season series, I should say, The World of Jenks. And he has a new book out, and Andrew Jenks, My Adventures as a Young Filmmaker. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having you are young, but you started even younger as a movie maker. So you're a kid who just somehow got hold of a, of a camera uh, as a boy and uh, never, never stopped looking through the lens? Uh, my parents traveled a lot when I was a kid, so mm -hmm. we lived in Nepal and Belgium, and so a lot of the people that I was surrounded by didn't speak English, mm -hmm. and by default kind of picked up uh, the big bulky VHS camera that my mom had and just started filming everything, and so that was kind of where it all, where it all started, and then after my freshman year of college, I was kind of having a, a miserable time and didn't really enjoy it, and so I was really close to my grandfather, mm -hmm. and he had been experiencing, or, or ha he had dementia and couldn't mm -hmm. remember my name anymore, and mm -hmm. I'd always wanted to make movies um, and didn't have the money to you know, make a, a real you know, a, a, a fictional film. Mm -hmm. And so the freshman after my, my, after my freshman year, I moved into a nursing home for five weeks and made a documentary about what that was like. Right, right. Oh, for goodness sakes, are you in for trouble, baby? <laughs> I went to get my birth control pills. <laughs> did you film your grandfather uh, as the dementia was setting in? Did you chronicle that as a movie maker? Uh, so what happened was, as I was seeing his mind deteriorate, I, I started to really think of this idea and the nursing home that he was staying at wouldn't give me access to, to mm -hmm. film. Yeah. So eventually I found one in Florida, the mecca of, of senior living, and uh, they agreed. They said as long as I was willing to have dinner at, at uh, four o'clock every day, I, oh, yeah. could, <laughs> Early I, bird special. I could do it. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what happened. I see, I see. Now, you said that at one point, though, you wanted to make um, uh, fictional movies. You slipped into documentaries because they're cheaper to make than uh, getting a job as Steven Spielberg or something like that? No, um, what happened was the HBO documentary happened mm -hmm. and then ESPN gave us a um, one million dollar budget which was a million more dollars than uh, <laughs> yeah, right. the previous movie to go to Japan for seven months and make a documentary about Bobby Valentine yep. yeah. and so we went and did that and then MTV called and asked if I'd be interested in doing a series about uh, young people who were going through circumstances that you know many of us can never imagine and so I've just continued to go places where I feel like I can do work that you know, makes a difference or, right. or, or shows people in, that would normally never get attention on mainstream, uh, tel you know, mainstream television such as MTV. Now, I was watching your uh, technique recently, and you, you actually, you, you live with these people. You don't just sort of pop yeah. in and out of their lives. You spend a great deal of time with them. Is it, is it a kind of a, a, a fake friendship or relationship you're developing just to get them to trust you so that then you get those aha moments that you use? Right. Um, what I think for me, uh, my approach, and I don't think there's a right approach or not, but mm -hmm. for, for, what, for what I do is I have a tendency to follow people that are in vulnerable situations. Mm -hmm. And so whether it was a senior citizens or this season, for instance, on our MTV show, I follow a young woman with cancer, mm -hmm. a young man with autism, yep. another guy who um, lives in Oakland and is surrounded by Tough gang violence yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know his brother and best friend were killed. And so I feel like by my being in front of the camera, I'm able to I'm not kind of hiding behind the camera in a comfort zone, right? And they see that I'm willing to be vulnerable as well. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is why I'm I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And then your question about, you know, you're what, seducing them in a way, though, aren't you? So they feel so comfortable with you that you get. I mean, that that, 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 that would certainly want. be the cynical way from the New York Post of <laughs> <laughs> looking at it. Hey, but, I'm a, a tabloid <laughs> newspaper reporter. I do the same thing, my friend. <laughs> um, but no, I, I wouldn't. I would definitely not. It's off the record. I would definitely, yeah, right. <laughs> I would definitely not characterize it as that. I'm looking for people that I can follow that I feel like are not the Kim Kardashians of yeah, the world. Right, right. And so, if you want to call it, which I'm not offensive, offended by it at all, right. if you, you know, if it's manipulation or what have you, then yeah, of course, sure, you you do what you you can to authentically portray these people's right. lives and right. so and they have no approval over no, what you're going to show, no, of show or do no but what i do when i first move in with them is say you know they are putting themselves out there mm -hmm. and they don't have to in fact a lot of times i have to convince them to do it they're not looking for attention we you know we find them we do our research to find them so i when i first meet them give them my cell phone number and say when are, when we're shooting 
post-production, when it's airing afterwards, you always have my number because we may show something that you don't like. You know, right. you may have, I lived with a young woman whose parents were alcoholics and you know, that's all in the show and her parents don't look particularly good in that. And she was really upset about it that we did that. And you know, so I, there's a, for me, it's always just having an open line of communication mm -hmm. because they allowed me into their lives. The least that I can do is have them call me or talk to me at any point to walk them through what my thought process is. All right, uh, Andrew uh, Jenks, a very talented young filmmaker. Second series of World of Jenks uh, coming up on MTV soon, right? Yeah, it's on Mondays at 11. Mondays at 11, And okay. it's an hour long, and we follow three people. I lived with three people off and on for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And so you get to really see that they're in every episode and you get to really understand the trajectory. Right. Um, and, you know, again, we're talking about you know, real stuff here, you know, young woman with cancer, young man with autism. So it's it's issues that I feel like aren't portrayed or, or out there uh, on television, much less on MTV. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. All right, uh, Andrew Jenks also has a book out, My Adventures as a Young Filmmaker. Thanks a lot for being my guest on here. Yeah, totally, it. yeah, man.